advised the president on who should win the Presidential Medal of Science. And these three tours of duty got me closer to Washington than ever before and exposed me to things that I had no idea were a normal process of the body politic. For example, you look at Washington and expect people to make rational decisions. No, they make political decisions. That's why it's called politics, okay? And then you, like, judge it for being a political decision. It's a political decision. Get over it, okay? So now I see political pathways, because politics is always stronger than everything else, because we that's the kind of society we live in. I know that if science goes out of the classroom, the nation gets financially poorer. And when you have people in charge who don't want to die poor, you reach a tipping point where they say, this has got to stop. And I submit to you that that's what happened in Dover, Pennsylvania, where everybody comes up to that and sees, oh, it's a Republican-appointed judge. Oh, it'll never go the way we want it to go. And sure enough, the academic community couldn't have written it better than how it turned out. How was that so? You have an intelligent Republican judge who doesn't want to die poor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is my analysis of the situation. So it's onward and upward because you see the real cash value of science. Yes, and I wish I could have people study science because of its beauty and its majesty. And were it all that, that would be great. But some people will only do it because it'll make them wealthier. And you know something? I'll take that reason as well. If it gets you reading a science book, <laughs> I'll take it. And so this country doesn't want to die poor. And so there is the source of my long-term confidence in the ability of this nation to make decisions. Thank you very much for being on Point of Inquiry, Dr. Tyson. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. That is my first, my first time, and I hope you invite me back. It will be our pleasure. Thanks again for joining us. You've seen the headlines. Bill seeks to protect students from liberal bias the right time for an Islamic reformation, Kansas School Board redefined science. These stories sum up the immense challenge facing those of us who defend rational thinking, science, and secular values. What one advisor to the Bush administration dismissed as the reality-based community. Who could have imagined that reality would need defenders? The educational and advocacy work of the Center for Inquiry is more essential than ever, and your support is more essential than ever. Show your commitment to science, reason, and secular values by becoming a friend of the Center today. Whether you are interested in the work of PSYCOP and Skeptical Inquirer magazine, the Council for Secular Humanism and Free Inquiry magazine, the Commission for Scientific Medicine, or Center for Inquiry on campus, by becoming a friend of the Center, you'll help strengthen our impact. If you're just learning about CFI, take a look at our website, www.centerforinquiry.net. We host regional and international conferences, college courses, and nationwide campus outreach. You'll also find out about our new representation at the United Nations and important national media appearances. We cannot pursue these projects without your help. Please become a friend of the Center today by calling 1-800-818-7071 or visiting www.centerforinquiry.net. We look forward to working with you to enlarge the reality-based community. Thanks for listening to this episode of Point of Inquiry. Join us next week for another discussion with one of the world's leading figures in science, philosophy, ethics, public policy, something like that. To get involved with an online conversation about today's episode, the conversation with Neil deGrasse Tyson, go to www.cfi-forums.org. Views expressed on Point of Inquiry don't necessarily reflect the views of the Center for Inquiry nor its affiliated organizations. Questions and comments on today's show can be sent to feedback at pointofinquiry.org or by visiting our website, pointofinquiry.org. Point of Inquiry is produced by Thomas Donnelly and recorded at the Center for Inquiry in Amherst, New York. Executive producer is Paul Kurtz. 
Point of Inquiry's music is written and composed for us by Emmy Award-winning Michael Whalen. Contributors to today's show include Thomas Donnelly, Sarah Jordan, and Lauren Becker. I'm your host, DJ Gruffy.